When a fly sees a predator, it will look like a looming and expanding object on its retina. And the fly first stops whatever it's doing in a freeze. It will then adjust its legs in a very precise way. It then raises its wings to get ready to take off. And then in a final movement, it will stroke down its wings, kick with its legs, and jump into the air and start flight. My lab is really interested in how it is that our brains decide what to do next. How do we make behavioral choices? And we think that by solving this in the fly, we can start to get clues as to how our own brains might be making those kinds of choices. Fly escape is a great behavioral paradigm to work with to ask these questions because when a fly is confronted by a predator, its reaction is not just a knee-jerk reflex. There is some kind of more complex processing going on in the fly's brain and potentially in its spinal cord that are making a series of decisions. And we're really interested in how that series of decisions is encoded by cells in the fly's brain. We need to be able to look at a lot of flies performing this reaction. And so we've built an automated machine which we call the fly pez because it dispenses flies similar to the old candy dispensers, dispense candy. And this enables us to bring a fly one at a time up onto a filming platform where we can capture the fly's response to a video of a predator approaching and we can record the fly's response at 6,000 frames per second. The fly is standing in the middle of a domed screen. It's kind of like an IMAX for the fly it sees a dark circle expanding rapidly, which mimics exactly the time course of a damselfly darting in to grab it. This automated machine is something that we've invented in my lab. As far as I know, no one else yet has a machine quite like this. We're able to get through over 2,500 flies in a day, which really enables us to do more thorough quantifications of what these behaviors really look like. Fly escape sequences are not all the same. There are at least two different types. In one case, the fly is trying to get away very quickly and it doesn't bother to take the time to put its wings up. It will just kick off the ground in a very short escape. In another circumstance, the fly is more interested in controlling its takeoff direction and so it takes the time to put its wings up to get ready and then to do a very nicely controlled long escape takeoff. Our fly pez apparatus is designed also to work with optogenetic experiments. And so what we do is we genetically modify the flies and then we can use our same apparatus, flash a red light to turn on a neuron of interest and then capture with our high-speed video what the fly's response is to having that particular neuron activated. The population of neurons that we've been focusing on are a group we call the descending neurons. And this is because they descend from the fly's brain down to its equivalent of a spinal cord. And this is a really interesting population of cells because there's only 350 of them per side, but this very small bottleneck population encode all of the sensory processing that the brain has done. And somewhere in this code must be the message to the motor centers of the fly for what action to perform. And so we're interested in decoding this population and understanding what the message is that the brain is sending to the muscles. And so we're currently going through and we can turn on these neurons one at a time and see if a single neuron being turned on uh, results in any particular action of the fly. We've been working in a collaborative project here called the Descending Interneurons Project with a postdoc hero who's really been the anatomist who generated these descending neuron lines that everyone uses. So far, we've identified about half of all of the descending neurons. And this includes identifying what they look like, where in the brain we think that they make connections, but then also making what we call reagents, which are individual fly lines that have expression just in a single one of these descending neurons. So that's about 180 different fly lines or different cells that we can drive individually to see what they do. This is the first time that anyone in any animal has been able to systematically go through this particular population of neurons, potentially to completeness, we're halfway there, and really try to understand what a single neuron is doing.
we've traced back the decision for a fly to make a short escape versus a long escape to a single action potential in a single neuron that connects the fly's brain to the equivalent of its spinal cord, its ventral nerve cord. It's called the giant fiber, the largest of these descending neurons. The fly has two giant fibers, one on either side of its brain, a right one and a left one. What people thought before we started our work was that this was basically the only way that the fly took off. I think the idea was that flies were maybe kind of like um, little robots and the giant fiber was a sort of jump button and whenever the fly needed to jump, the giant fiber would be activated and the fly would perform that behavior. As we dug deeper into what the giant fiber was doing, we found that it was really only used for one precise kind of jump, this short mode jump where the fly takes off very quickly without doing any other preceding behaviors, and that therefore other parts of the nervous system, other descending neurons, must be controlling these more nuanced jumps that the fly can do. A postdoc in the lab, Katie, has had some good success actually making direct recordings from these giant fibers while the fly is responding to predator-like looming stimuli. We're looking at like five or six different types of neurons that all converge on the giant fiber, which makes it a really interesting question in how you know, multimodal integration happens. One fly at a time is put under a microscope so that we can zoom in on its brain and really try to pick out an individual neuron that we want to target for recording. Three, two, one, click. Got it. So we can actually compare when the giant fiber spike time is relative to when the fly behavior occurs. And so what my lab is really interested in doing now is looking at this whole population of neurons that connect the brain with the ventral nerve cord to see if we can understand uh, more complicated decisions that the fly makes. We're probably a long way from a complete understanding of the brain, but the hope working in flies is that we could actually make very rapid progress in understanding specific parts of how the fly brain works. And we think that what's important for that is understanding brain function in the context of behavior, in the context of what the fly is actually doing. It all starts with the fly.